the fact that Roland Martin just went back and forth with Tyrese saying that a stop hate Asian bill is equivalent to the civil rights bills that is proof that y'all been in our business way too long. Haitian business is your business, sir, not ours. And the fact that it, and it's also proof that y'all are here hindering us. Just like I said, if we are fighting for anything that y'all don't deem necessary or is not progressive to y'all, y'all hinder it. It, it, it. And it's so asinine that y'all continuously do this out in public and continuously deny it. If I migrate to Jamaica and I become a citizen of Jamaica and Jamaica start to fight for something that I don't agree with or it doesn't benefit me or something like that, it'll be asinine for me to actively fight against it. I would just be quiet because it's not my fucking business. But this is what we'll be talking about with y'all tethers. Y'all need to worry about yourselves. Haitian business is your business, Mr. Roland. Haitian business. But the fact that y'all are doing this to the people who opened their land up and opened our identity up to y'all, when y'all go and y'all check those boxes, y'all get to check African American, y'all get to get our benefits, the things that we fought and died for, y'all get to y'all get to, to have these benefits from the fact that we have continuously have to go through this with y'all is asinine and diabolical and just like i said when it comes to us our lineage our heritage and the things that we fight for is not white people that are hindering us so i hope y'all get to see it as y'all seen uncle luke and his rant just like i said to get there and call rizza islam a is fucking crazy even after he said that he studies under farrakhan no no you don't no, no you don't you feel what i'm saying Y'all are having an identity crisis and y'all don't know y'all place. Black American business is not y'all place. Roland Martin, Haitian business is your place. Kai Sinek, Jamaican and Haitian business is your place. Y'all, 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 y'all don't know how to mind y'all business. And that's why we are, that's why we at the, 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 the place that we at, okay? Mind the culture that is your business. All right. Man, these kids in the house by themselves, man. Look at this. Can't have you, little baby. Look, he's smiling now. I know. This baby was just crying, and there ain't My nobody in this house. Doors wide open. I don't know what's going on, man. This is sad. Nobody in there. They just this this house is wide open with these two little kids wandering around. Yeah, the house looks trash. It looked like somebody was moving out, and they just left their kids. This We're is crazy. He just came. I just reached for him. He just, he was, just, he just came. 615 Anybody know who these children are? Thank you. You know where their parents are? Well, we called them the police, so. If you know who these children are, y'all need to get here ASAP. He's so excited. Come here. Hold on, Papa. <laughs> He like, you know. Hey, anybody know this house? Anybody familiar with this house right here? Anybody familiar with this house? This is the house the little kids are at. No parents, no one. If they are in there, there's no response. And I'm not going in that house. But I went and grabbed that little kid out the garage because he was yelling and screaming. This is crazy. It's, it's looked like they was moving out. There's stuff all over the place. The little baby was right there in that thing right there. I just went and grabbed him. He would make sure nothing was wrong with him. The baby was laying in that yelling and I can hear him all the way from my house, like across the alley, about two or three houses down, screaming, just screaming. Do I pick him up? I looked at her policy when she was an attorney general. Yeah. What makes you think she's gonna be any different from that to now? When nigga, her whole policy was locking up black men. Yeah. And she married to a white man. 
and her children aren't fully black. So how can you understand the plight of a black woman when your mother's not black? How can you have love for us and you wasn't raised with us? The only reason she know us is because she studied us from an Indian perspective. That's how she learned about our civil rights. And she went on to later to go to Howard University to engage in black behavior, but she went there because she was a minority that can get into this college with the Indian heritage. Y'all think Obama was black? Because they gave y'all a skin color. Just like this Indian woman whose daddy's Jamaican, who daddy left them when she was a baby. She's Indian. So your mind said, I think, therefore I am. So whatever you think, that's what you are. Obama never claimed black. What? Yeah, I don't. You know better not to say nothing. What? All of y'all. Anybody else? Anybody else? Y'all think we can't pick us monkeys too? You think that's cool? You think that shit cool? You think that shit cool? Fuck. What? What? No, she texted in the group chat talking about cotton pickers and monkeys. I don't give a fuck who you is, Casey. What? Why the fuck is you talking about cotton pickers and monkeys? Bitch, you're white. What the fuck is you talking about? Exactly. Give us the vote! 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 They're speaking to bring the bills up now, now, now. This, these are their bills. They have their names on the bills. They're killing their own bills because they're scared of the government. Now, listen, they're going to see this and they're going to get mad at us. They're killing their own bills, then, then, then they're going to get mad at us. They're killing their own bills because they're scared of the government. We don't care. We need to see the bills up now, now, now. The governor needs to understand that the world is watching California. And this is going to have a direct impact on your friend, Kamala Harris, who's running for president. This is going to have a direct impact. So pull up the bills now. Vote on them and sign them. We, we, we have We've the been votes. waiting for over 400 years. Thank you. Where are these black people at? Y'all are the black people I've been looking for. Malcolm X told y'all about these liberals. The Democrats don't give a damn about you, fool. Many of y'all Negroes functioning in your freedom, leaving the plantation, they're losing control of the narrative. When they lose control of the narrative, that impacts them because it impacts their pockets because their job is to run past interference for the Democrat party. And if the numbers bear out to be true, that is bad news for Democrats. And that means the people that they're paying to be on the forefront, the aristocracy, the pundits, the professors, the preachers, the politicians, and the performers, that means that they are slipping on their jobs. So now they gotta go into overtime. And they go into overtime and they pull those stunts like this, but what they don't tell you is that they are cowards at the core. They do this because you dared to speak the truth. You're one of the ones that got away, or you're one that is always functioning in your freedom. You dared to expose the unfruitful deeds of darkness. You dared to function in your freedom, something that they are too cowardly to do. And so because of that, they have feelings of resentment towards you. They can't have you functioning in your freedom. You have to be beholden to the Democrat party if it is the last thing you do. Voluntarily signing up for your own demise, also that he can get rich and sit in his ivory tower. These closet gay men hate strong men because they expose their inadequacy. It's dangerous to homosexuals, be they open or closeted. Remember the response of the men of Sodom and Gomorrah towards Lot. They resented him for not partaking in their evil deeds. But this is what they do. When they see Americans, particularly Black Americans, functioning in their freedom, people like Rolanda can't stand to see that. They despise it because they don't have the courage to do it themselves. They wish they could stand on business. Take those shackles off because they hurt. Then your wrists are chafed, your ankles ashy, and they itchy from the shackles on. But they can't because they're paid to keep the free thinking Negroes in check. They got to do this. But yet the things that you support, abortion up to the ninth month, you don't even have the ability or the concern to protect our children, the most vulnerable amongst us. You want black people to turn a blind eye to the invasion of their communities by people who have not earned the right to be here lawfully, sopping up their resources, and you just want us to be charitable and act like that's okay. But the only reason why you do that is because you are a shill for the Democrat Party, and they pay you well to stay on code 
to promote this destructive, calamitous culture of failure, which has us at the bottom. And we are done tolerating the likes of you. We're done. It takes a lot of courage and fortitude and tenacity to stand up against these wicked people because they will try to destroy your name, want to associate you with bigotry and white supremacy. Like that's supposed to make us scared and be quiet. But the last thing we're going to do is sell out our own people for 30 pieces of silver. Being a Christian means that yes, we love our enemies, but it does not mean that we bow down to our enemies. We speak the truth to our enemies. And sometimes the truth can be like, you are wicked. You're wicked, what you represent is wicked. Everybody you roll with is wicked. You need to be called out. It doesn't make you a punk. We stand clothed in the righteousness of Christ, not in our own strength, but being weak, lacking courage, and fortitude, that is not who we are. So I don't know, maybe you used to dealing with these old school conservatives who were afraid. It's some new people on the block. It's a new day. And we are making change. Guys, listen, we have sat around long enough and voted on people just because of their race. I remember when Obama was going into office, I did not care what he talked about. I did not care what policies he had. All I knew was Obama was black. And that's why I voted for him. But this year, guys, don't get mad at us because we see something completely different. This year, we're not looking at race. This year, we're looking at policy. What can you do And one for thing us? I can say about Trump was, when Trump was in office, I remember the economy. The economy looked nowhere near as terrible as it do right now. And I also remember Trump was up there fighting to put up that wall. I remember when he was being attacked, they was making fun of him, talking about, oh, the wall. Oh, he's going to build the wall. He's so racist for saying build the wall, build the wall. Now look at it. Flash forward 2024. Up here talking about, well, we wonder what's going to happen in Chicago. Is the people getting ready to go to war with the Venezuelans? Like, come on, like, why is it even a thought of the people in Chicago who are settled in their homes, having people come from a whole nother country, fight and attack and try to take the territory that they live in? Do this not sound like an issue? Y'all gotta use y'all common sense here. If they in office and this is happening now, just imagine what it's gonna look like four years from now. Will you be able to sleep comfortable and safety at your house at night? That's what, that's the question. Because it looked like to me that they trying to turn this into a third world country, if you ask me. You know, if you could go on the news and see two apartment complexes in the Colorado being taken over by gangs, where they going up to their doors as if they are the landlords with weapons, um, shooting at the police, all of this other kind of stuff that's going on in Colorado. Do y'all really want that in your cities? Like, come on, we got... This this election, we are making sense of what is common sense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if y'all mad Democrats. I, I apologize. But I just really honestly don't care. We're using common sense in 2024. Common sense says they have been in an office. They have not done anything for African Americans. So therefore, I don't have to do anything for them. All of them folks try to make you believe like Tamika Mallory's funny looking self lying on the breakfast club. Like these are things that she's been involved in supporting the study for rep. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people keep saying that the woman is not for reparations. I have heard her say over and over again. She said it here yeah. on breakfast. Club. Yeah, I don't understand. She said she supports it. Charlemagne the God the other day lying on the breakfast club talking about Kamala is for reparations. Tamika Mallory going to sit her funny looking self on the breakfast club the other day talking about she don't know why we saying that Kamala is not for reparations. Silly because she said it out of her mouth and we saw the footage. We played the footage. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, no, no. That's why we say it is slowness. So it appears that I made a lot of my mutual white folk friends here on TikTok very, very angry with my last two posts. And that's how you can tell who's racist among you. That you know how you know how black people have racist friends, but they hide it very well. That's how you can tell. Start talking about the egregious stuff white people do and see when they start explaining. Well, well, he was mentally ill and his father walked away, his mother, and then they start they start explaining away the reason why white people do the stuff that they do, but when black people do it, right?
they start calling them thugs, criminals, uh, monsters, predators, and all the derogatory words. And you, you, you see, so when I was calling, when I call out black people, because I'm in the black community, I call out black people, mess and all that stuff. They love me. They they all, if you go on a lot of my posts, they all like my posts. But the moment I, 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 I use that same energy because I'm an equal opportunist when it comes to, you know, accountability, when I start calling out the, 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 the stuff that white people do that everybody can blatantly blatantly see and they can see they start calling me racist and then they want to they want to message me dm me and call me all type of stuff and then unfollow me yeah that's what just happened that's what's happening to me see now if you are a yt person this is just take this as a lesson how come when we when, when y'all see black people do gang violence against black on black you know you know black on black stuff that y'all call black on black crime you know what i mean listen here black people when black people get angry they get angry at the person that angered them so if it's a rival gang who retaliated and did something to them and now they got to retaliate and do something back they 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 have a target in mind that would that which is a rival gang right you all, when y'all get angry at somebody, your mother, whether it be your mother, your father, your, 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 your a politician you hate or something that's a bully or something like that, you take it out on random people who don't have nothing to do with the reason why you're mad. And that needs to be studied because you actually see that all through history. Every time you all get mad at somebody in your life, you take it out on everybody, you take it out on the world. Most of the world wars, the daggone, all the crazy stuff that happened in the world that y'all did, somebody else afflicted y'all and y'all took take, take, take it out on everybody else. That has to be studied because what is, like the world would be a better place if people, listen, I don't condone any violence. I'm not condoning any violence. But if I have a problem with somebody, my problem going to be, re going to remain with that person until whether we settle it or whatever happens. I'm not going to have no problem with somebody and then going to take it out on somebody else who don't have nothing to do with our issue or problem. And that's what you all do. Y'all shoot up everything. Y'all kids go and create viruses and put it in and then and, and take it out on everybody. Y'all created slavery and then so, somehow turn, reverse it around and blame it on us. Y'all create laws that y'all break all the time. And then when black people break it, we are the most disgusting lawbreakers, lawless people in the world. That's what I'm saying. That, that, this is what y'all do. I've said this before. I'm going to keep on saying it because y'all not hearing me. There is a difference in the interests of black immigrant Americans and black Americans. We represent different motives. We represent different interests. I represent the people who were here prior to the colonization of this place. Y'all have got to acknowledge that there were people who looked like me beautifully, golden brown melanated people we're functioning on this land, evolving, evolving over here. We have adapted to this land here. It is ours and we are fighting to maintain what is ours. Immigrants, I'm sorry, are doing what colonizers do. So I get a bad rap from women on this app, but I'm gonna share uh clips from my live yesterday night um regarding you know black men's mental health black men's uh you know inability to open up and and things of that nature and the stigma we have towards therapy therapists and things of that nature and i'm gonna follow the women that always got something to say about me or something to say about black men now watch these clips watch the stories that we're sharing watch interactions and i want y'all to view it and then I want y'all to match it up with some of the things that women get on here and say about me and what I do on this platform and compare what goes on in my lives to a lot of the lives of the women that got something to say about me all the time and see if it's as productive and gets the results that mine do. It's a little long, but I hope you stay to the end because you might get something out of it. Let it roll. Yeah, with a situation that was touched on earlier about being sexually assaulted. When I was three years old, there was a woman and her friend, and long story short, 
the therapist was asking me about the traumatic situation that I was going through at the time and basically started peeling back the layers. And basically it got to a point of the subject of what happened to me as, as a child. And I didn't realize how much that situation messed me up over the course of my young adult life. I just thought I was just a young man out here wilding, but I didn't even know how much it was messing me up. And I would tell you, when I was like 21, 22, I had, I had a, basically, it was, it was childish, but it gets you to the point of, that I'm trying to make. I had a phrase that basically sex was my hobby and I play to win. And when I said that to my therapist, he said, do you not realize that the reason why you think that way is because when you was three years old, they made it a game for you? Mm. Because that's how they got me to do it. They told me that it was a game. Three years old, didn't know. I, and I didn't realize how much it affected me throughout my relationships, my dating life. And I, I cried because I was just like, I felt like a misfit out here. Yeah. I felt like, like 